Hello, uh, my name's David, and today I'm going to be showing you how we can take a Raspberry Pi um, and with just a servo um, make a candy dispenser that gives out candy whenever anybody tweets at the hashtag of your choice. Um, so basically, a Raspberry Pi, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a small computer uh, and it has a set of what are called GPIO pins, general purpose input and output. And these pins let us read or send out electronic signals um, as well as being a, a full computer. Uh, Raspberry Pis are great, they're cheap, $25 or $35. I'm using a B plus. Um, I'm not gonna talk any more about setting up a Raspberry Pi or peripherals or anything like that because there are a lot of great tutorials and I'll, I'll link to some that are already out there. Uh, the important things for this project is we do need a way of connecting to the internet. So you can either use the built-in, take it out of the case, the built-in ethernet port, which is awesome. Uh, or if you don't wanna have your project tied to being uh, wired, you can just get a, a USB, wireless USB adapter. I bought mine for like $8 or something, super cheap. Um, and then that's basically it. You'll need a couple of wires just to wire up the Raspberry Pi to our servo. Um, I'm a big fan, if you think you're gonna be playing with your Raspberry Pi a bit and you wanna get into hobby electronics, these pins are really great to have, uh, these wires, because they have just a male and a female end, which makes chaining them together easy or putting them on the GPIO pins. Um, so I have a set of about 20 of these and 20 uh, male to male pins. Um, You'll need a servo. This is a cheap three or four dollar servo. Um, if you don't know, basically a servo is the equivalent. Uh, it's like a motor, except you can set the exact angle you want the arm to be at, which is great. So that means when a tweet comes in, we can set it to spin out to the side and then spin back again a couple milliseconds later. Uh, and thus, that's some of our candy out. Uh, this structure I'll sort of leave up to you to how you want to build, but I just took a Coke bottle, snipped the end off, um, took a Tupperware container, cut a little hole in it, and then taped it on. Um, one of the cool things is you can actually put your Raspberry Pi inside, and then you have a way of protecting your Raspberry Pi from dust and everything, but it's cool because people can sort of see the inside of it. Um, I also bought recently a Raspberry Pi case, again, optional, but it just means it's a little safer if you have a project that you're gonna be leaving out um, somewhere. So um, step one, which again, I'll provide a link to, is to get a Raspberry Pi and get Raspbian, which is the default operating system, installed on it. Um, and once you have that, and you, you've basically you've learned how to log into your Raspberry Pi, then step two, is setting up Node.js. So the code I've written to do this Twitter uh, listener and dispensing is in Node. It's great because that way you're writing JavaScript, um, which is super easy to learn, super easy to play with, um, but it's doing all this cool hardware stuff for you. So again, other great people have written awesome tutorials about that. So I'll provide a link to how to get Node JavaScript set up on your Ras Raspberry Pi and how to set it up so that it'll run one of your node scripts on start. Um, so that'll be step one and step two. Step three is gonna be only if you wanna do Wi-Fi, but if you do wanna do Wi-Fi, you just have to change one file um, so that you set up the name of the network and the password of course, because you need that for wireless, um, that it'll connect to and tell it to try and connect automatically when uh, the Raspberry Pi starts up. So once you have those three steps done, you will you'll have a Raspberry Pi that can connect to the internet um, and then it'll run a script on startup. And the reason we do all that is so that your Raspberry Pi doesn't, you don't have to connect to it when you want to run this thing. You just plug in the power, plug it into the wall, and then it's running. Um, the other things I have, um, which is cool, is if you're going to run a, a motor or a servo or something that draws a fair bit of load, it's not a great idea to use the power supply on the Raspberry Pi. It does provide a 5-volt pin and a ground pin, 
Um, and, and some people do use them, but it's really not recommended to get reliable behavior out of it, um, as well as risk damaging something. So you can get, uh, again, for super cheap, these sort of wall, wall wart things that um, says a normal jack on the end, and you can get an adapter where it lets you put wires into the end of it. So it's got its positive and negative. So this way um, you can have an independent power source for your servo. You could also buy a battery pack, uh, that works too. Oh, and of course you need to buy some candy to put in your thing. Um, so that's, that's all those steps. Um, once you've gotten to that point, uh, your next step is to go to GitHub. And on GitHub, you'll want to, uh, I'll provide the link, but you'll go to my account and you'll find a repo for the Candy Twitter bot code. Uh, if you're comfortable with Git, you can you can pull the repo and go ahead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you're not, you can just click this link to download a zip file. So that'll get you a zipped up file that has all the code in it. Um, you want to unpack that, put it onto your Raspberry Pi, and then you'll want to go back into your browser and go to uh, Twitter's developer website and. Since we're using the Twitter API, you need to create a Twitter developer account and grab an API key. So this, um, it really doesn't matter too much, but basically they want to keep track of who's using the API just so that you're not sending millions of requests and, and messing up their servers. So um, you grab this API key and then you put it into the code that you downloaded. There's a, a settings file. Um, so you put in the your API key and then um, your script's all ready to go. Uh, you can change the keyword that it's looking for. Um, by default, I think I have it set to something like Obama, which will trigger candy basically every second for you. Um, so you change that to whatever keyword you want to listen to. And then from the command line, you can just run, uh, run the script just to see if it's working. And then once you're comfortable with that, um, the tutorial from step two explained how to run a node script when the Raspberry Pi starts. So you just want to tweak it so that it runs the candy Twitter bot code when it starts. Um, and then you're done. Plug it in and whenever somebody tweets at you, you will get candy, uh, which is pretty awesome. Thanks. Bye.